<clears throat> hey, what's up guys? Coach Mack, play fast football. All right, today we're going to take a quick look at running a dark play two different ways against the bare front. All right, I've done a video before on a dark play, how much I love the dark play. Today we're going to take a look at it versus the bare front. Uh, you know, front that sometimes can give you a little bit of trouble if you're in 11 or uh, 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 20 personnel, two back stuff sometimes, the angles on, on certain things and get a bunch of one-on-one -on -one blocks. So I'm going to take a look at the dark play and a little bit non-traditional uh, version of, of a dark play possibly to work against the bear front. Make sure you check out some of our sponsors, GameStrat, Sideline Replay System that we use. Uh, Just Play Football is the digital software that he, uh, we use to uh, build our playbook. And then if I'm speaking at any clinics or doing any webinars, that's the play drawing diagram tool that I use. High and Tight is a ball uh, security training aid that we use with some of our skill players. Uh, you hear an auditory beep when you are holding the ball correctly, wrist above elbow, split the tip, pro uh, all the proper points of pressure. If you don't hear that beep, you're not holding the ball correctly, so it gives an instant feedback to kids, an auditory feedback of how to hold the football. Difference USA, which is the ultimate striking machine, we have one in our weight room. You can set one up in your weight room or out on the field. They're very easy to move, very easy to set up. Perfect during um, a, a pandemic like this where you're worried about cleaning things and, and contact and it's one bag, one pad. Every time you use it, you clean the pad or the kids disinfect hands before they touch the pad. Very simple to use. Work on striking elbows in, thumbs up. Get a thousand reps without needing to partner with the Difference USA Ultimate Striking Machine. Baker Sporting Goods is the company that we use locally here to provide our team with uh, their spirit packs, our coaches gear, um, our fan gear, uh, our player uniforms, our Adidas uniforms that we wear. So we get everything from Baker Sporting Goods. They've been around since 1997. Uh, I love the fact that the sales reps have been the same for me the last seven years at the schools I've been at. It's the same sales rep I'm dealing with all the time. I get consistency. I get quality customer service. So make sure you check out uh, Baker Sporting Goods. And then Dome Hats, which is the headwear sponsor of the high school I'm at and uh, play fast football. This is our swords up hat at the high school I'm at. So you can see you can customize, build your own hat. So we build our own logo, take the eyelets and make them black. I can take the button and make it black or orange. I can change the panels. All right, make the bill orange. I can write something on the side or the back like that. So they have an unbelievable online hat builder that lets you customize and build your own hats, your own style, your own back. Is it Velcro? Is it snapback? Is it adjustable? So you can build your own hat online. Check it out, www.domeheadwear.co. All right, every hat has a story. Why don't you let Dome help you tell yours? So for me as a 20 personnel team, with some of the gap schemes we used to run, whether it was, whether it was, uh, you know, a lot of power stuff for us. We would always have an issue with some of uh, the bear stuff because we always had to figure out that we need to put our center back on a three technique when the guard was pulling. So anytime we put our center back, we felt like that left us with three one-on-one -on -one blocks up front that we had to be really good at dominating. If we didn't dominate those one-on-one -on -one blocks, all right, even though they were all uh, gapped down with pretty good angles, we felt like if we were playing some really good players in here, all right, or if there was any movement in here and we couldn't dominate those one-on-one -on -one blocks, we felt like we didn't have a scheme. Okay, so one of the things I, one of the things I found out with the dark play, we had been running the dark play um, in and out for, for different years, going all the way back to about 2004 uh, as an original tackle rap play. Um, but one of the things I've been finding out recently and studying some more about the dark play is there's teams that are mixing up uh, the dark play as a tackle trap type of play, like the old school kind of in a way, the old school um, wing T or single wing tackle trap stuff uh, and now they're using that as a split flow so the tackle's almost working like a fullback and it's a split zone theory with the tackle. There's teams that are still running it as a wrap theory but there's so many different components to it and one of the ones that I had never looked at versus the bare front all right, until, uh, until a couple weeks ago when I saw a college team doing it was running the dark play like power and kicking all right, uh, a, a front side nine technique and back or whatever it is with a fullback like you would on power, but using the backside tackle. Now, I think the concern always was backside tackle's coming from too far, maybe he can't get there. But in theory, it's the same play. You've got a kicker and a wrapper. All right, so in theory, if your tackle's a guy that can run a little bit, it's really, especially against some, some bare stuff and even some tight front stuff, the angles it gives you now when you want to run that play Okay, now make it to where you're going to get a down block on a three, all right? You can now double the nose, which is what I would choose to do because the center for us in high school is usually 
the guy that needs a little bit more help versus odd stuff. So because of the angles of this down block and this out block, I would double the nose back to the will there. All right, and now you're gonna kick with the fullback and you're gonna take this backside tackle and you're gonna ISO him up on the mic like you always would on dart, right? Dart's an isolation play. That's really what it is. Tackle wrap dart is an isolation play making the fullback the isolation player on the linebacker. And I think, I'm sorry, the tackle becomes the fullback isolation player on a linebacker, like old school um, under center eye isolation plays. So I think that's why teams and college guys also started getting smart and saying, well, if we can wrap the tackle and he becomes the fullback on isolation, well, then we can kick or long trap somebody and he becomes the split flow fullback on zone theories, all right, or duo gap theories, all right? So teams started to take a look at this and saying, all right, if Tackle wrap is an isolation theory, and he's the fullback in an iso theory. Well, then tackle trap or tackle kick can be a split zone theory, and he now works as a, as a fullback splitting the flow in the backfield, all right, with the tailback. So now what we've got is we've got a down block on the three, which we would have on power anyways. But now instead of a back block with the center on the three and a solo block on the nose, because we're going to pull the backside tackle and now we can read, because we're pulling a tackle, we can read that backside five technique. Now what we're going to get is we're going to get angles to get a double to the will, and we're going to get angles to get a back block on the three, keeping him where we want him, because he's already, as long as he doesn't cross my face, he's already outside the play with leverage anyways. So all I have to do is wing with the original leverage I have on a base block. I can even make it a base drive block. Don't let him cross my face. Get the good double team on the nose. Okay, could you double the three? Sure you could, it's a matter of what you want it to do. You're gonna end up with one double team and two solo blocks. Choose your best players, choose your angles, whatever you want. And now you got yourself a power play with a tackle wrapping. It's still dark for the tackle. He still wraps on a play side inside linebacker. So it's still an isolation theory. He's just gotta go one gap further past the three technique. And now you've got a little wrinkle on a dark play that versus, all right, the bare front gives you better angles. All right, and it gives you six to block six while you read seven. Okay, and you don't waste, you don't get all solo blocks by wasting guy the center going back and the tackle hinging the three technique, and now maybe you're a man short or you end up with three solo blocks up front, all right, depending on how good you are and how good they are because you had to block back on the three technique. And that's the same thing that happens with like the tight front, the four-eye stuff, or the mint, some of the mint front stuff, or anything where teams are kind of playing that four-eye. Now, when you run gap schemes away from them, if you're pulling the guard, you got to think about blocking him back because he's better than the tackle from that inside part. Maybe you can't cut him or scoop him. So that shade makes you think about how you want to block him back. How are we going to get the ball to the perimeter because he's tough now in that inside shade. He wants the ball to go wide. All right, so the dark play as a quote-unquote version of power all right, the dark play as a version of power now becomes something that you can run to get good angles, get up at least one double team at the point of attack, all right, and then you can still, within your tempo world like we would do, you can still run access throws here and some type of, all right, RPO depending on how aggressive the jack is. Like when the jack is up as a five technique and he's on the ball, I really don't like RPO in that a lot because even if he's unblocked and I have this slant window, He's unblocked from the first level. He, he gets there. I could tell the quarterback to, to step up and block him, but then it's not really an RPO in my opinion. It's just an access throw. So you could RPO this side if the Jack was a player that wanted to walk a little bit. But if it's going to be true, 46, bear, double eagle, you know, at least five of them coming, and the Jack's going to come hard, I don't like RPO on that side. But you could still build your tempo stuff in there. All right? And then, you know, one of the other things you can do is off the same action, you can get kind of a bash theory now, and you can run it as a counterplay, right, which, again, I, I watched Oklahoma do it. I didn't know, didn't really think about it, didn't know it was possible. And then I watched Oklahoma do it, which obviously Oklahoma has good players, but just the theory to me was cool. Now you can run a bash theory this way, all right, where you can read that five technique, and now you can get... The out block there, the double to the mic there, the down block there, and now you can run FT counter and you can go FT. So the tackle runs the dark play like he always would. All right, and now the F kicks, quarterback reads, 
and now you've got Bash to the front side, or you've got quarterback FT counter going back the other way. All right, so you read one. You got six on six within the dark theory. It's an addendum or an adjustment to the dark theory, just like the kind of power version. So now, to me, you've got a dark theory, all right, and then you've got kind of these wrinkles to where you're running dark as a power scheme, and then you're running dark as a counter scheme, right? And then you still have all your traditional Because for your old lineman, it's not going to change much. Now you have all your traditional dart stuff, so you're carrying the same scheme. You're not worried about teaching new schemes. All right, you're carrying all the all the same schemes, and you're not really worried about um, teaching new schemes. Now that they, now the bare front, the, the gaps and down is a little bit different. You're, you got more gap down theories than you do true dark theories. All right, but. They're smaller wrinkles than they are changing entire plays. You know, so now you can run it away from, try and run it at the one, so we want to run dart this way. So we want to base or pass set, we could pass set the five. We want to double the one back, we want to get the angle on a three. And now we could do it two ways, all right? In a tempo world, we could do it this way and say, hey, look, if the one is to the side of the back, it becomes quarterback dart automatically, all right? So if we get the one to the side of the back and we're pulling that guy, then it becomes quarterback dart automatically. If the one is on the other side, okay, or, you know, the side that we, let me draw it up this way for you. So we'll go same side mesh with the dark play. So now, if you want it to be in a tempo world and not a true check with me world, you could say, okay, all right, we're going to run the dark to this side right here. Okay, so we're going to pass set to five. Whoops, sorry. Double the one back to the will. All right, now we have to base the three. All right, and we have to base the five. So we are going to, all right, run the dart that way. But we don't like it that way. All right, we don't like it that way because we want the dart play to run to the one technique. All right, so now what we can do is we can just opposite the call. Don't flip the back, just opposite the call, and leave the back here, and now run the dart the way we want it, and make it QB dart, so the back never moves, the back never changes. Okay, so what they basically know is we come up, we're going to run the dart to the one technique. We want to be a tempo team. It's kind of check with me in a way. All right, we're going to do it to where we don't switch the back, we don't switch. One technique is there, we're running quarterback dart, one technique is on the other side, we're running our normal dart play, so you've got the two... All right, one back old-fashioned dark theories. We want to run it at the one technique. Okay, we don't have to switch the back and, and switch the mesh side. We can just say, hey, look, if the one technique is on the same side as the back, it's going to be QB counter. If the one technique is away from the back, then it's going to be normal dark. All right, just so you can see what I'm talking about here. So we had the back set there in the tempo world. We don't want to move them. We're getting up on the ball. We're ready to go. All right, if the one technique is on this side like that, it's quarterback, all right? But if we had the one technique on the other side like that, now we're running our traditional dark play. So now we're gonna stay with the play and we're gonna run the dark there with the mesh and the read right there, all right? So if the one technique is on the side of the back, it becomes QB dark automatically. If the one technique is away from the back, all right, now it becomes our normal mesh read version of the dark play. All right, and the good thing about that is, in today's game, a lot of times you'll get teams that set the three technique to the back. So if they set the three technique to the back, you're good to go with your normal dark play. All right, so the dark play is very, again, I, I did a video on this four years ago on the versatility of the dark play. You can run it with bash theories. You can run it with toss read theories. It can be run as a misdirection where the sniffer goes away from the fullback. You can run it and wrinkle it as power counter type deals. So that mesh play has so many built-in things that you can do but it's very simplistic in nature with who the puller is. It's always going to be one of those tackles. If your tackle's a dude and you switch sides, strong, quick lineman or whatever you do, maybe you always run the dart away from the dude and he's always the puller. All right, But it's just something to think about because the theory has been good for so long. Even going way back into the day to tackle trap stuff, you know, tackle trap, tackle wrap, tackle pull theories have been good for so long. And now to me, when you take that guard out of it, not only do you get uh, some different 
handles that are better when the guard can stay on a three and the center doesn't have to back block like versus the bear front. All right, but what you also get is to me, it's a tougher read for the linebackers. They've got to see some color flash and pop because the, the, the guards that they're used to reading, the center guards that they're used to reading, the back to play side guard, the center to the side, the center steps to guard, all those reads within that triangle of the center and the two guards right there, all those reads now aren't as true. You've got to see an alert and color behind there. You've got to be able to read. So I'm going to look, all right, there's the back. I'm going to that guard. I read that guard. Well, he's double into one. Do I fit this way? Oh, crap. Big body just flashed the other way. Puller, like counter, right? So you don't get a guard pull. You get just a tackle pull. So to me, it's also harder to read. So I think the dark play is a very easy, very cheap thing to install. You can trap. You can run it as a long trap and get two double teams. You can run it as an isolation theory and wrap it. Like I said, you can wrinkle it to where it looks like power counter with down gap stuff. So it's very versatile, very cheap to install, very easy to run. A lot of different ways you can do it. It can be red. All right, as a double or a triple option theory. So there's so many things you can do. I think it's worth carrying a dark play. All right, remember guys, uh, subscribe to the channel and put turn your notifications on so you know every time we do a video. Thumbs up, thumbs down to uh, like the video, not like the video. Uh, make sure we know the content we're doing, what you guys would like to see, what you do like, what you don't like when the videos get long. I know I get a thumbs down when my ads get long. I know sometimes I get a thumbs down. So all that interaction is great. Make sure we know exactly what we're doing with the content. Okay, and then leave a message. Every message that I can see on my end that doesn't get blocked, I try to respond to. So leave a message. Also, um, if you're around tonight, I think tonight at about 8 o'clock, I'm going to try and go on uh, YouTube Live and talk a little bit about playoffs, end of the season, game planning for playoffs. So if you're around tonight at about 8 o'clock, I'm going to go on YouTube Live. Appreciate everything you guys do. Stay safe out there, guys. I'll see you next time. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast.